Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Back in Houston, can wear my heavy cowboy hat and even crazier glasses. Gonna have some good times this weekend. Membership section, watch out. Anyway, let's talk about something that I've been meaning to do a video on for a while. Actually, I filmed it right before Munich. I visited my friend who's in the membership check section as well. Pete the Greek, who you've seen in Zoom interviews, was one of the ones that brought the Bach to my attention. Um, in terms of making me sit in that sweet spot. I had heard about it before, sat in that room, the Bach room before, didn't sit in the center seat, so I didn't know what was going on, didn't know what the big hoopla was. It wasn't until a year later, Pete pulled me in at Capital Audio Fest and showed me really what I was missing, and the rest is history if you've been following along. But this was my first time, and we kept in touch, Great guy, gonna come visit me here. Uh, we saw him in Expona. My friend Doug and him hit it off well. Just a great guy, um, been keeping in touch with him ever since. Uh, but I got a chance finally to visit his house when I was going to Munich. I stopped off in New York, which was close enough to where he lives. And we had dinner, fabulous dinner down, a uh, Greek restaurant down on, in Manhattan. And then we went out to his house. And he has these techniques, SBR1s, that I've always said were really one of the best speakers, period. Um, but they came in one time at 3MA, and man, they were just killer. And Pete was looking for a speaker. I told him that a pair had come in at 3MA, and he bought them sight unseen based on my recommendation. I said, you're not gonna be disappointed. And sure enough, he wasn't. And so I wanted to come hear him in his room with the Bach because I had heard him at 3MA, and quite frankly, they were beating $60,000 speakers, where some of these $60,000 speakers were bottoming out, not giving me, even with test tones, 20 hertz in small rooms. Uh, these SBR1s, I think they're called by Techniques, unbelievable performance, beautiful finish. If it didn't have Techniques on it, if you could take any other, quote, uh, hoity-toity uh, brand, audiophile brand, people would think they're mega dollars just like some others some of their competition charges and you want to talk about something that is the next level from the point source uh, the source points at that budget point these are also true point source for the most part um, but it gives you that true full range to 20 hertz performance and just a little bit more refinement so if you want to find something that is that next level up it takes a lot to beat those source points the eights and the tens but similar presentation being a true focus on source point being a true source point this uh, technique speaker is incredible and so got video footage i shared a few youtube shorts on the way out to munich if you've been following along but on top of that system which is amazing with uh, really cool amplifiers and associated electronics beyond reproach but he also has a home theater with vintage gear that you never see in terms of also the players that he uses. And uh, I don't want to spoil anything. I just want you to watch this video. But trust me, this is well worth watching. And Pete's a great guy. He'll be coming down to Houston soon. So I look forward to seeing you again uh, soon, Pete. Thanks for the hospitality. And let's get started. All right, guys. Hopefully you watched the YouTube shorts I uploaded from Pete the Greek's Awesome other rooms, the Kabas, Pearl, the Techniques with the Cat, and the Bach for Mac, awesome, in his family room. But this room is killer. It's his home theater. Uh, big aficionado of movies. How many movies you said you have, Pete? It's got to be close to 10,000. 10,000, okay. Let's take a little walk around the room here real quick. Uh, you got the powered... Actually, a powered watchdog I don't see very often. Uh, they have the passive versions. Sometimes it shows, but that's a the, massive the, sub. The reason why Wilson went from, um, from active to passive, because the company that was making the amplifiers for them, a lot of them were failing, and they were not engineered properly. So Wilson was getting pissed yeah. because they would have to pay for all, for all the shipping back and forth, which is which is a big expense yeah so they said no enough is enough let's just go with a passive and let some and, and which let, i like uh, that idea because the w things that always the thing that fails the most in speakers are subwoofers yeah. and those plate amps or whatever amp right. 
uh, and you actually you have another one jumping ahead right. real quick, a right. JL, JL that's failed. JL. I've been to other people's houses where their JL has failed. It could just be a coincidence, but you said there is a part yeah, is that a they part. know about. Uh, JLs are made uh, in, in Florida. They claim that it's American made, which most of it is. But the circuit board, at least in the version one, was outsourced to China. And there is a, um, there's a capacitor, once you plug it in and before it turns on, that does whatever it does. You know, like I'm not quite sure what it does, but the Chinese screwed JL over and they used very, very cheap parts on the board. And all those capacitors failed and now it won't even turn on. <laughs> so this has to be the entire thing. It's a beast. To have to, to ship, ship back. back the JL. And for at your expense. Rep, at, at, at my expense. I, I, I'm still working on it with them, so I, I don't want to talk negatively about JL because JL is another great American company. They, they make great products. And they were, they're actually taken advantage of. So I cannot uh, badmouth JL when the Chinese screw them over. Gotcha. That's, that's the only thing I can say. So we'll, we'll update that. Actually, we have another update we're going to have with another problem you have, but the company took really good care of you. But we'll get to that in a second. Uh, getting back to the Wilsons, this is a killer um, Wilson Home Theater. You've got the matching center channel and um, – the watches are these right, called? Right. Yeah. The watches I have an oral 3D setup. Oral 3D yeah. setup sounded really good, really cool. And a legacy Krell KSA. KSA 250. Okay, and that you had like refurbished by the factory. Yeah, this was the first piece of high end gear that I ever bought back in 1990. 1990. And 1990, and I, I have tremendous sentimental value. Sure. So I, I shipped it up to actually actually drove it up to Connecticut where where Krell is now, and they um. They recapped everything, they changed some boards, and it sounds sweet. It's very powerful, and uh, it's, it still sounds great. 30, does it 30 get hot? Later. It does. Very hot. <laughs> yeah, very hot. I bet. That's you know, cool. The, the cat upstairs, which is... Um, 18 tubes? Which is 18 tubes or whatever, is cooler than this. Okay, but you don't need a heater in either of those no, rooms. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Well, let's look at some of the killer stuff here. Most people would look at this rack and not realize that this is a... This is, a, um, this is the Cosmo, huh? The, uh, yeah, this is the Soda Cosmos. Soda back. Cosmos with the SME arm. SME arm and a M, uh, Bandit Hall MC10 cartridge. Cool. Uh, yeah, just take, take the lid off. Uh, this, is, this, is from, this is from back in the day. I'm actually going to be sending it back to get up, updated. But it's, it's got great suspension. But now the suspension valve is magnetics. So okay. there's no... There's virtually zero feedback. So you've had this for a long time. Yeah, this, long standing yeah, piece. This, this I bought back like in the early 90s as well. <laughs> wow. So that's yeah, a lot of mileage. That's great. Yeah. yeah. You're not one of these gear swappers because uh, you buy right the first time. That's right. Uh, and, this, and this is John Curl's Vendetta Research Photo Stage. He, that he used to make in his house before his house burned down in California. Okay. This was handmade by John himself. And uh, these are highly collectible. They rarely come up on the used market. You and said you were offered like 15K? Yeah, I was offered 15K, and I said no. That's two power supplies. Yeah. yeah, yeah for each yeah, channel. Right, right. Yeah, and that's... This is uh, Vintage Wadia, Digimaster 64.4. See, I've never seen that. Uh, uh, it, it sounds fantastic. It blows most uh, DDA converters of today out of the water. Interesting. And a Stax. A Stax. A Stax Lambda. Yeah. The 1990s. Okay, so I'm a big uh, Stax headphone fan. Yeah. Killer. And then you got your surrounds. Oh, let's look and see what's behind the closet real sure. quick. You got quite a collection of everything. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> a lot of movies, laser discs. Wow. Uh, and, and this is just one of your closets. All right. Many more. Oh my god, you've got movies galore. Yeah. yeah. Did you just buy out all the blockbusters when they went out of business? I mean <laughs> And you can't forget about the back, right? Yeah, let's go look at the there. other whole closet here. Where you could put the uh we were talking about going the the uh the sub, the the propeller sub in this room. Right. The propeller sub I have um like a little bit of storage in here, but okay. then the other rack is here, which yeah, let's, is, um, you, you can step in over here. Let's let me put on the flash here because, yeah, okay, so what are the pictures that you're watching on the screen? iRobot, um, is actually digital VHS, 
Which, as you were telling me, only had short-lived. Yeah, it was short-lived. It, it came out, I believe, in 2000. It was maybe around for two years. They did release um, 100 plus titles, so there are some titles out there. But this was before Blu-ray came out. And as you can see from the picture, the picture's killer. I mean, it's really... Yeah, so this uh, was back in 2000. It's, it's really a phenomenal picture. And, um, Interesting. You know, these are available on, on eBay if you want to dabble in it. And then powering, powering all the speakers. Um, Pass Labs. Pass X5. Labs. I, 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 I have two of them. And um, I have a Denon processor over here that actually uh, converts and takes an interlay signal and converts it to a progressive signal at 24 frames per second. So that way you get full cinematic. So it's called an upscaler or something? Or? An, uh, an upscale converter. Okay. Yeah. And then you got a data and set. I have a data set. Um, which this one is the LS10, uh, okay. biggest bargain on the used market right now. This, this and the um, and the Trino of Altitude came out at the same time along with the Storm Audio, but um, data set didn't make it. It got bought out by another conglomerate, so it's pretty much out of the picture. But it's got the cha same chipsets as the as the Trino, of, and the Trino of is twenty thousand plus, hmm. twenty five, thirty thousand, depending on the configuration. And this does everything. It does Dolby Atmos. It does uh, Oro 3D. The whole nine. Really? Lives. So yeah, if you see one of these, yeah. I know one. I think one came into 3MA and people didn't know what it was. Yeah. So yeah. And then I have a Lumigan processor uh, to color balance. This will be here is a high definition uh, laser disc player from 1990, only released in Japan. And what this what this did is that uh, this put out a picture of roughly 1,100 lines of resolution back in 1990. Hmm. And this was not equaled until Blu-ray came out in, I believe, 2004, 2005, something like that. And this is the uh, decoder that decodes the picture, and that's another past lab. And you were telling me some of the disc, the laser disc, don't have the compression in the audio that other right. uh, formats exactly. suffer from, and you, you actually collected some of those source pieces. So... Yeah, here is somebody that's paid attention to two channel, as you've seen in those YouTube shorts. Has the box for Mac, has an oral 3D killer home stereo, uh, um, home theater system, room treatments. Let's not talk. About the projector here. It's, yeah, it's, it's a JVC, but I use an anamorphic lens. Uh, hmm. This is a Nisco lens that's made in Germany. Um, it's it's on a motorized sled, so I can move it in and out. But um, wow, when the projectors first came out they would zoom out to fill in the screen but when you're zooming out you're losing a lot of the light because the light is going to, to the black bars okay and the picture becomes blurrier it's not as sharp so this allows you to use all the light so it's bright and all the resolution and it just stretches out the picture and it goes hand in hand with, with the lumigen so anamorphic lenses are really they're here to stay Video files like myself, that's the only way to go. I mean, nice. Anytime you want to stretch something out, you're losing light and you're losing resolution. All right. Well, I know you've got a lot of uh, movie memorabilia, too. Yeah, yeah. That's Should we go? Next. Okay. So let me put it on pause and let's go take a look at that next. Okay. So before we get to some killer movie memorabilia, let's talk about this kibas that you ordered, the kibas pearl. You bought this. You were at Expona with me. Right, that was, you that were was also and we were blown, um, away, yeah. blown away by the stuff. Now, there was some mispricing by Upscale Audio with the wrong price tag in front of someone, or somebody moved them. Uh, but they were accommodating when you told them. Right. They actually I gave you a actually discount. The, actually, one of the people that was at Expona, I spoke to them on the um, phone, and I'm like, oh, do you remember me? So he goes, yeah. So uh, I said, did the price go up $1,000? So he's like, no. So I go, remember we had the conversation that this was only a little bit more than the smaller version. And he's like, let me, let me speak to the owner. So he called me back a few minutes later and he goes that we can't take off a thousand dollars, but we'll meet you in the middle. So I thought that was that, that was very honorable. Okay. So, so whoever made up the tags, Miss Smith priced them. So I ordered point. the next day, it came a few days later and dead out of the box. It would not turn on. Uh, it was, uh, I was, I was pissed. So I, uh, wrote a str strongly worded letter to uh, Upscale Audio at 10 o'clock at night when I set it up. Next next morning I got a phone call immediately. They were um, 
incredibly professional. Um, they said that it probably got dropped because it's you know this this is a beast. I don't know. Weighs Jason. Yeah, it's, it's hard to pick up. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's very. You hard think to pick that's up. a light thing? No, it's not. Yeah, and and it came in the big box, and they're like, if if it would have gotten dropped, the circuitry could have dislodged. Sure. Which is understandable, which is not their fault. So, what they did to me, which I thought was great, they're like, you know what? We're gonna ship you out a brand new one, right away. And when you get a chance, send this back to us. <laughs> and they sent me a prepaid envelope. So, like, who does that? Right? Yeah, very Upscale nice. It, which is very nice to them. Yeah, kudos to um, them for stepping up. They, they don't know me from a hole in the wall. Right. You know, this is a first time customer. And um, uh, kudos to them, and I will be buying more stuff from them because that's the type of deal that you want to deal with. Um, so, and uh, I think we played it before, right? Yep. Yeah. And it's I got it on killed. a YouTube show. People should really, the, the finish of this is not just a cheap white. This is like a, a pearl white, a pearl and pearl like white with a little sparkly. This is very it's attractive. Spicy. And it'll play at ear bleeding levels that, uh, in fact, it comes with a warning. That you can have permanent hear loss, hearing loss with some yeah, of the Yeah, so they claim that this, that this goes up to 118 dBs. Um, I actually have an SPL meter. I clocked it at over 120. Oh, my God. I think like 124. And now keep in mind that an F-16 takes off at 140 dB. So that's not too far off. Yeah. And um, they, they clearly say that don't play it more than 100 dBs for more than one hour or, or above 115 as it will cause permanent hearing loss. So, does it crank? Absolutely. Um, it's a marvel in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean... And also, uh, very impressive, I haven't tested it out yet, but it goes down to 14 hertz. <laughs> 14 hertz, which is like unheard of, especially on a speaker this size. Right. Um, but when we played it before, it definitely kicks deep. Yeah. And um, it fills the room up. Tremendously. It's a, it's so a killer it's a company, product. killer product, and then kudos yeah, and to upscale, kudos, kudos upscale for stepping up. Um, yeah. But let's uh, showcase some of your cool move memorabilia. <laughs> this is from I Dream of Genie, the, the actual two. prop. The actual bottle that was used in season two. Okay, cool. Let me put on the splash here a second. That is cool. <laughs> Brings you back in time. And you got three, four, five pieces from the oh, Titanic, Titanic movie? So this is a miniature that was uh, uh, when they were filming the actual miniature model. Um, Sinking or something? Yeah, so uh, in the beginning of the movie when they go from the sunken ship to the actual ship in its glory, it's a miniature. And this was one of the chairs that was on the deck. And this is a piece of the deck. Cool. And back here we have the two tickets that Leonardo DiCaprio won. In the movie, actually screen used. Um, this is from uh, Rose's um, or more inside her bedroom. It holds up book of matches. Ashtray. And it's, and it's an ashtray. Uh, and then the menu. And then this is the menu, uh, again from the movie. This is not from the original Titanic, but the menu of what was served on April 11th, which is the, um, the last luncheon that was. Hmm. Served on the Titanic with this. The, the Titanic sank on the 12th. Giblet yeah, soup. Giblet, giblet <laughs> soup, yeah. Kind of glad that's then sank. over here we have um, the bomb from the, I believe, third to last episode of the whole series. This is the bomb from Lost that was um, detonated that killed Saeed, Sun, and Jin into the submarine. This is the actual, the, the actual bomb. Cool. And if you look at it, and if you go to that scene, the screen matches, and this was purchased, you know, directly from ABC. They had a charity auction at the end of the final season. That's cool. Yeah. That's a cool piece to have. Certainly, all of these, I really like the I Dream of Genie. Let's look at some of these other ones here that are. Yeah, sorry for the mess, guys. Inside the well, you're moving bomb. some stuff over. We yeah. have a crystal from the original 1978 Superman with Christopher Reeve. This was in the Fortress of Solitude. It's got a light underneath. That's why it's going to be changing colors and stuff. Uh, but that's but that's the actual crystal. That's one of the actual crystals from there. And then over here we have uh, the Batarang from Christian Bale's, uh, actually Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins with um, Christian Bale. That's that's the Batarang <laughs> that was in the movie. That's cool. And then more we have, Titanic. Uh, more Titanic. That this is uh, uh, flatware and silverware that was on 
the uh, the tables inside the actual movie. This is from Bruce Almighty. Uh, these are the lucky beads that he uses in the movie and throws away. This is uh, this is uh, Tom Hanks's stopwatch. Um, not stopwatch. The his pocket, pocket watch. watch yeah. Pocket watch from Castaway. Castaway. Cool. And this is a teacup from Titanic. Some more props. Then over here we have um, Tom Cruise's mask from Eyes Wide Shut. That's um, really cool. Yeah, it's really intricate. Another piece. From... And you have one other Stanley Kubrick piece. Let me show yeah, it on the wall here. here. This is also from uh, Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut. I, I love Stanley Kubrick. I think he's the greatest filmmaker that has ever lived. And right before Tom Cruise goes into the Rainbow uh, costume shop, there's two of these, one on either side of the rainbow shop, and uh, specifically designed and commissioned by Stanley Kubrick. And as you can see on the bottom, it says Hickory, but on the bottom, if you look quickly, it's, it says Orgy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it, I, on quick, on quick right, view, Orgy, right. and of which course, is what they were going to exactly. So he goes to the costume shop to get his cloak and his mask, and to go to an orgy. Well, I don't. I think there's a better way to end a video than on an orgy, <laughs> but we got a few more things. Got a few more. So this is uh, from one of my all-time favorites, um, Titan uh, Titanic from 300. This is yeah. one of the uh, battle yeah. masks from one of the soldiers from 300. Got some blood stains. And you got some blood stains on here. That's and cool. The swords. And um, it's really just fabricated out of fabricated, foam. Fabricated, right? Right. Cool. And this is Luke Evans' uh, mask from Immortals with Henry Cavill. Hmm. Um, again, if you look on the side over here, you can see, you can see cool. all, all the blood yeah. spot, all the blood spot over there. And this is one of the bad guys. You know, call it over there. If I had these, you'd see me wearing them in the videos. <laughs> I would it. be too tempted to put them on my head and go out with them as well. So these are really cool. All right. Well, thanks a lot, um, Pete, for showing me a great uh, night, great food. Great system. Hopefully you guys, if you didn't watch the YouTube shorts, have more details on this system. Has the Bach for Mac. Sounds amazing. Cat gear, killer, preamp, oppo, krell. Just an all-around, and lampazator. All-around awesome house. Awesome guy. Hope you guys enjoyed.